There's a nice passage in a John Lee's autobiography where he's talking about a tudong that he was on with a group of monks and lay people. And they're setting up their tents in a forest on the edge of the ocean. And all of a sudden this huge cloud of mosquitoes was coming in off the ocean. So John Lee told everybody to put up their tents, sit and meditate, and he was going to fight off the mosquitoes with goodwill. And he said, no holds barred. It's not the usual image that you think of when you think about goodwill. The idea of goodwill, metta, tends to be something softer. But here John Lee was talking about it as a strength, as a fighting strength. And it's important that we keep that in mind. We live in troubled times. There's a lot of injustice going on around us. A lot of danger. A lot of really misguided people. And we have to remember that in our dealings with those people, no matter how bad they get, we have to have goodwill. We have to maintain our goodwill. And that's our strength. Because after all, we're here not to win out over people. Because when you win out over people, what happens? Everybody dies eventually. And you're left with the karma of what you did in order to win out. So you have to make sure that if you are in conflict with people, you have to do it with goodwill. That way you can guarantee that your actions will be skillful. You can't guarantee that you'll always get the results that you want. In that particular case, that John Lee was able to fight off the mosquitoes. But there are other times when he, would, he couldn't. I knew a monk who knew a John Lee when a John Lee was teaching at Watasokara. He was a, this monk was a young monk at the time, and he was sitting meditating and was bothered with all the mosquitoes flying around. He decided to open his eyes and check and see, well, maybe with a John Lee working with his breath energy, with breath coming in and out of all the pores, maybe that was keeping the mosquitoes away. But no, a John Lee was covered with mosquitoes too. So there are times when no matter how much goodwill you have for others, you can't win out over them. But at least you're guaranteed that in your own actions you're not doing anything unskillful. And that's the legacy that you leave to yourself and the legacy that you leave to the world. I mean, there are people who've fought for justice in the past, but they've done it in very unskillful ways. And the legacy they leave behind is the example of their violence or their lack of skill. There's a concern sometimes that you can't get people to behave in just ways. But even the Buddha himself couldn't get people to do that, aside from being a good example and extolling the virtues of being kind, being generous. And that's the example he left behind, and it's an example that's lasted now for 2,500 years. You think about all the other people who've had their ideas of justice or how society should be. And most times we don't remember them at all, whether they won or they lost. And what they have left, of course, is the legacy of their karma. To remember that it's, as the Buddha said, it's better to win out over yourself than it is to win out over a thousand other people. And your main possession consists of your actions. And so what's going to keep them going, going well in bad circumstances? Well, strong goodwill. Here in America we would say industrial strength goodwill. That no matter how bad someone else is going to be, you've got to have goodwill for them. Because your main concern is how skillfully you're going to behave toward that other person. And it may happen that they pick up on the fact that you do really mean well for them. You see that they are misguided. As the Buddha said, when someone is doing something unskillful, you have to have compassion for them. And there's no, no redeeming characteristic in the other person at all. That means you have, to even have, you have to have even more compassion. 
because it's just, they're just digging themselves deeper and deeper into a hole. And that's for the damage they can do to you and the people you love or the people you care for. What I said, that kind of damage is much less a concern than damage to your virtue and damage to your right views. So goodwill protects both of those. Remembering that we're here for happiness that harms no one. That doesn't mean it's going to be a happiness that everybody's going to praise or like. I mean, there are times when you're practicing and saying the right thing may hurt somebody else's feelings, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're harming them. There was this book I was reading recently where the author was saying, well, even the Buddha spoke in harmful ways. But what he meant, what the author meant by that was that he would sometimes hurt people's feelings, challenging them on their wrong views or saying things they didn't like. Well, that's not harm. There are times when saying something harsh, something strong, something unwelcome, is an expression of goodwill. Goodwill is not just tenderness or gentleness. The example the Buddha gives is of a child who's gotten something sharp into its mouth. Okay, you have to pull the object out, even if it means drawing a little blood from the mouth. Much better than letting the child swallow the object and have it tear up its insides. This, this doesn't mean that we're weak, and metta doesn't necessarily mean loving kindness or tenderness. There are times when you have to be sharp with people as an expression of goodwill. But if they can sense that it's coming from your goodwill, then you're fine. There are times when pleasing words are actually not, not skillful. Where gentleness is not skillful. You may not know the story by Flannery O'Connor, a good man is hard to find. This crazy guy has kidnapped a bunch of people. He's holding them for ransom. He sits there and he's talking and he's had a miserable life. And there's one old woman who listens to him and she starts developing tender motherly feelings for the guy, realizing what a damaged childhood he had. And so at one point she kind of reaches out to him and immediately shoots her dead. says, you can't trust anybody. So there are times when tenderness may not be the best expression of your goodwill. But remember the goodwill, the desire not to harm anybody, and if you can get other people to act in skillful ways, so much the better. But if you can't, you have to guarantee that your own skillful actions aren't going to be affected by other people's crazy, strange, bad behavior. After all, your actions are yours. No one else can give you bad karma. You're the only one who can give yourself bad karma. And you do that through a lack of goodwill, a lack of discernment. So goodwill is something you have to keep in mind all the time. And that you're, The battles that you fight in the world, choose them well. Choose your battles well. But always fight with goodwill, using goodwill. Remember that it is a strength. <laughs>